time we had this kind of seminar. Remember that? What did I say? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, used children. Black, I used to black out anytime I talked in public and I'd have to ask for it afterwards. I'm like, what the fuck did I say? I just remember Heath looking at me and saying, you probably shouldn't say that in the future. <laughs> um, normally I show guard passing, but I actually want to show you guys some wrestle up stuff. And uh, one of my favorite positions to play in Nogi is going to be Shin on Shin. Okay. So, first off, for Nogi in general, guys, there's not every guard is as good as the other guards. All right, it's not like the key where you can reach out and grab something. We're kind of limited in our attachments to Nogi. So like I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out what's optimal guard play for Nogi. And one of the few attachments that you can get really easily and stick really well and do a lot offensively with is Shin on Shin. Other guards I think are really good. I'm not going to say them all, but I think Reverse Steel he was really good. Anything that's to do with butterfly hooks, um, if, if they come down to your half guard, that's great. Close guard is always fucking really good. Any of the saddle stuff is really good, but Shin on Shin is kind of my preference, okay? Because I like to be able to interchange, wrestling up, chasing the back, keeping my opponent off balance, and not getting fucked. So, okay, we've got, take strong Chad Hawkins in front of us. Okay, I gotta talk sure. about being on our back to begin with a little bit. Um, a lot of big mistakes people make right away in this position. You see them, their feet are really far away, and their elbows are just chilling here, okay? Right now, Chad can be in front of me, he can instep me into my knee. Into my knee. Okay. All right. Now, now, this is already a huge problem. If you've seen any of my knee slice material, you know what's coming. Okay. And combo this with the fact that my elbows are already out and my head, my posture, are going to be a little bit too far forward for how far my feet are away from my body. He's going to be able to underhook me, touch the back of my head, and I won't be able to get away from the knee slice at that point. Okay. So these are already just a lot of posture mistakes. What I need to be doing here. All right. A lot of times I choose a lead leg, okay, and this kind of changes depending on what side he's trying to pass to. If he's constantly trying to instep me with this leg on this side, this is my lead leg, and this is what I'm going to be tracking him down with butterfly hooks. Every time he tries to step in, that, that hook will always fucking be in the way. And if I miss it, it's not, I will back up and put it back in the way. Don't try to play this position here. No key, okay? It's gonna get you immediately knee sliced if they <clears throat> All right, so unless you're already wrestling up, this isn't just a safe position. I only have a few offensive options, and usually they involve me going forward. All right? I like shin on shin because it's very easy for me to offset his weight at powerful angles, and that opens a lot of doors. So I have a lead leg. You switch to stance, try to walk on the other side. Now this is my lead leg. My elbows are not ever gonna be out like this. My arms don't go on the outside of my knees. Okay, because you can see I'm giving up too much under the room. And it's incredibly important to be aware of how dangerous underhooks are for Nogi because, again, passing Nogi is different than passing Nogi. You don't get to play off of dance grips. You don't have any options to really pull yourself in off of anything. So, what for, underhooks are easier to get Nogi because of reduced friction already, and they're just one of the few things he can go for. Okay, so he has to be looking for them, so I can't be giving them away for free. So my elbows are going to be here. Elbows are tight. Um, you can make a little bit of space, but you can see it's pretty easy to close this off than it is to close that off. Okay, here I can defend my feet, I can defend my head. Okay, a lot of times guys are trying to instep me and they're not having any success. The next thing they do is they try, try to club my head and do stuff like this. Okay, so they want to pull me forward and club my head. And go just say square up in front of me, like you can come in the pass. And it's really easy to keep your hands up and start to deal with these. Okay, and a lot of times dealing with this is going to lead to me coming forward and wrestling up because he's getting sloppy and how he's coming in, standing up. And like, you can literally pop elbows and sheep off your back for me, the same way I would do a standing. So especially with Chad, you gotta keep down on the wrestling a little bit. Come in, like you really want to club my head. And I can already come forward with you and slip past his elbow. Yeah. You see me do this a lot in a lot of rounds. And it's again because of just being here and him not reaching with good mechanics. If they reach with their elbows out, it's just like wrestling. It's really easy for me to go forward and slip under his elbow. Okay. Now, when I have this here, um, I really do try to avoid putting my hand on the mat. I mean, once it's on the mat, it's kind of just out of play. I'd rather it be grabbing something, reaching for wrists, setting up a fake arm drag or an arm drag, grabbing his ankles anywhere, not giving the underhooks away, defending myself. Right. Once it's on the mat, I'm really vulnerable on this side. Okay. Because my hands on the mat, you're naturally leaning this way. That means my frame, you see how it's gonna come in the middle a little bit more. All he's gotta do is get around the outside of my knee and now I have a real problem. Okay, that's it, it can be that easy. 
Okay, so I can't be like this. I don't really want to be this way too because mountain jumps and triangles, especially if I'm reaching, they are effective. And even if he doesn't hit it, a lot of times it gets him past my legs to the point where he can start to flow on me and then I'm in trouble and I'm behind. Right? So I do avoid this. Um, you can do it briefly you know, here or you can jump into stuff like dummy sweeps, that's fine. But it's just like you're, you're just using it for a moment. You wouldn't just chill here like this. Okay? It's a lot of stance stuff, right? We haven't even gotten to the guard yet. So we're here and here, all right? Um, depending on what he's doing, I do a lot of probing butterfly hooks, all right? And your butterfly hooks have to be sticky, okay? And I'm defining sticky as a hook that has consistent pressure and is not just there for show. So when Chad lifts his leg up right now, it automatically follows him, all right? Versus something like this where it's just there and he steps his leg up, oh shit, I tried to chase him after the fact, okay? Sticky butterfly hooks are going to be everything, from every position that requires a butterfly hook. Okay, and because I can alternate my stances, it's very safe for me to start probing with one. Okay, I wouldn't really probe too much with two, because if I reach out with both legs and he drops down on top of my thighs anywhere, it'll, the pressure will straighten my legs and then I'm in trouble. Okay, but one is usually fun, and you can be hand fighting them at the same time. Okay, and with this hook, I can start to pull myself in. Okay. Or a lot of people get frustrated trying to instep me while I'm tracking them down, and then they come too close to where it's very easy for me to attach to it. Alright? Now we're in the shin on shin. The very first thing you guys need to know, okay, I'm gonna jump ahead and talk about defense before I talk about offense, is he can knee slice the fuck out of you from here. And he can shut his position down. Now the ways he's gonna shut the position down is by putting my hip on this side. Alright? So if Chad right now puts his knee into the pocket on my hip on the left side, this is not good for me. This is a really good passing position for him. Okay? So I need to control which direction we go. Okay? And one of the ways you do that, keep your sticky hook pressure. I'm not just holding this, I'm kind of pulling in on this a little bit. And my foot's not just sitting here, it's lifting a little bit. So now there's a cross pressure up here. Okay? And because I'm lifting at an angle, naturally with a butterfly hook, it's wanting to take him that way when he wants to take me this way, okay? And I don't want to go on my back unless he, or unless I'm deciding to do it to go for something. So if Chad's able to just kind of push me down on my back at all here, you see how sticky it is from the hips really easy? I don't want to go there, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to have a floating leg, okay? This leg is going to float between here, a butterfly hook, and a shin hook, okay? Now the reason that this is so good defensively is if this foot is up on his knee, if I just lean, lean and push me on my back. Just kidding. It's not possible. He has to deal with this. It's in the way. The amazing part is how much wear on the knee it has. Are you just pushing that way and pulling that way? I think it's just your knees, man. Your knees are pretty good. You said the only thing left good on me. <laughs> mine are fucked. So, uh, this right here, guys, is mostly to prevent him from putting me on my back. This, at least, you know, he isn't going to help me set up a lot of the takedowns or a lot of attacks because, um, first off, it's hard for me to keep really attached to this if Chad just pushes me back that way and unhook the pressure. You can always say, I got fucked by God genetically. I do not have long legs. Okay, I wish I had another three inches. <laughs> and it would help me out a lot here. Okay? Uh, so he could decide when to unhook the pressure. But when he unhooks it, I shouldn't go past it. Okay, when he unhooks the pressure, I should retract my leg. Or I can put it on the mat, right? Chase butterfly hooks instead. Okay? In the gi, the way you play this position is you're chasing collar, sleeves, and dummy sweeps from here, and he has to get this foot off. But because I usually have something to pull against, I can really nail this pressure. And when he starts reaching down for my ankle, I can start chasing sleeve grips. And you can play like this no gi, but no gi, you have to be better at it. Okay? You have to know how to squeeze a wrist grip here and keep it, okay? And you have to be accurate and precise at reaching out for it. Because if he goes to pop my foot off, do it fast. I miss my opportunity. So you can get better at doing little things like this. You can practice your wrist grips, okay? Another way to buy myself more time <coughs> is pressure, right? Not overextending my leg, keeping it a little bit retracted. So he's closer to me, and there's pressure almost going on top of his thigh. So when he tries to push it down, push it off, it takes him a little longer. And the difference could be from 0.1 seconds to 0.8 seconds, you know? 
uh, just depending on how good he is at unhooking it and how good I am at keeping it. But that's extra time for me to chase those grips. Okay. But primarily, this is defensive. All right. So it's a lot of information, right? So I, I'm just trying to get you guys to the point where you can practice the position for a little bit. I need you guys to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay. And like I said, you need to know how to not get instantly knee sliced and passed. Okay. And this helps keep you from going on my back. Now you'll notice I'm a little looser with my hooks here. I'm not doing this. Okay. Um, there's there's a reason why. Okay. This gives me more leeway to play with my legs. Okay. The further away I am, the more I can move myself around. I can protect my head from evil guillotine motherfuckers and all of that. Okay. Whereas I'm here, every time he moves his leg, I move with him. It's hard for me to keep my composure from a position like this and really set up my offense. Plus, you know, they're, they're going to be doing dirty shit to your neck that I don't want. So, yes, I am giving up more of an underhook. And this is why I think it's okay. Right? When Chad underhooks me, he has to come down and go ahead, underhook me. I just come around. Okay, and this is how you stop a lot of knee slices in their tracks. I come around and I make a, uh, what the fuck is this? Cobra grip like, what is this? T-Rex. <laughs> um, T-Rex. Whatever, like, up here. Okay, on the, on the side of his head. I'm not like pulling with it. What I'm going to do is as soon as he starts coming forward, okay, pretend you got that off. I can start to push it out, okay? Underhooks need to be close to be effective. But when I separate his hand from his shoulder, here, go ahead just like knee slice me. It's not that he can't, okay? If I was lazy as fuck and I didn't hold this leg at all, go ahead and knee slice me out. Well, maybe not actually. But if I had held his leg, it would have been a lot easier. <laughs> Um, so you keep the, keep the leg, but you really do want to push their head away. You want to make separation between their hand and their shoulder that's underneath your shoulder. And that's going to lead a lot of times into setups for you because they commit to the knee slice without taking the steps to control my hips first, putting me on that side, then knee slicing me. They think they can just go for it. Okay, here. And it's extremely easy for me to prevent this. And most of the time, they go for it so hard without knowing what they're doing. You're able to just follow them and wrestle up on them. Okay? Don't do that on Pixel though. Because <laughs> you may get them in a single leg, but you are not going to have a good time. Okay? So to recap, you guys are going to be coming into this position here. Okay? Like I said, this is what is consensually in the community considered safer. Okay? Because you're closing off your elbow. Uh, here is how I like to play. Okay? And I feel safe without grabbing anything because I have cross pressure to my forearm and my sticky butterfly hook that's really letting me keep his leg control. I feel safe from not getting put on my back because of this. I know I can chase his wrist if he tries to pop that off, okay? And then if he does underhook me, a lot of times this just gives me free single X because I keep, my, my foot goes from here, usually to a butterfly hook. Okay, he's coming forward. And now I start to lift and scoop through into a single leg X or into a reap. Okay? So it went from he's trying to knee slice me and I get the, the easiest and freest entry in the world because I'm shifting his weight to that side. This weight is no longer on this leg. It's really easy to lift and strip it through. <clears throat> so elbows tight. Okay. Elbows tight. Okay. Lead leg probing. If you ever need to reach out for this, you can get away with this until they punish you. All right? Most people aren't really fast enough to knee slice you in that second that you're reaching out. Okay, I am. You reach for me like this, I'm probably underhooking and already going. Okay, so if you really have to take your opponent seriously as a threat, you should be reaching with this arm first. Just like in wrestling, you don't reach with this one most of the time. So you just want to underhook and dodge. You hear me. Like that. Okay, but that's going to be based on your opponent. Because honestly, it's, it is easier to reach with your left arm. And it's one of those things, if you don't think you're going to get punished for it, was it really wrong? Okay? But just be aware, I wouldn't do this to Bird. Bird will knee slice me instantly. You're goddamn right. I have to be here. Get closer. Now, when he goes under me, I'm close enough, I'm ready. Okay? Practice here. Practice your cross pressure, lifting a little with the butterfly hook, pulling in a little bit. You don't have to like break their leg while you're doing this, but there has to be some kind of pressure going on. And this foot's either here, okay, and you gotta get good at keeping this stable behind their knee, or it's coming down to do something like a butterfly sweep or a dummy sweep, 
Right? And then if they underhook you, right to the side of their head, push it out, and I start to lean to my right, and I strip my foot through, up into the air. Now it goes right in their head. It comes right across the reed. And if you're more comfortable with uh, the shallow hook style of single X, a lot of times I go right down into a laney hook, okay, the, the shallow single X, and then I can start to wrestle up almost instantly. Okay, you can go right for your technical stand up. Recap again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I will say though, he keeps my heel off the ground the majority of the time, right? So when you're doing it, my heel's coming up where I can't really push it down, and my knee's like, he's like, Pulling my leg out and pulling my knee in. So when you're doing it, look at that pressure. Sneaky hook pressure is. He's like just trying to keep my foot out and important. pull my knee this way. It's and that whole huge. time it's exhausting. Because you get that cross pressure, and that's what's going to stick. Elbows tight, probe, reach. Okay, stick that hook. Right away, I'm looking for something like this, okay? He's reaching down, we're going for the hands. I want you guys to practice on this one when I, when I perch you guys up. He reaches for the other hook and starts to knee slice you. And just rolling to the inside, separating his head, keeping his legs separated, okay? That's why I said I switched to a butterfly hook here instead of keeping it on the knee. Because if, Ta if Chad can kick my hook off right now, not like that, go up there. There, right there, oh, that one. If he did that while coming down to his knee size, I would be fucked. Because I would feel safe because I'd have to up the butterfly hook. And then if he knew what the fuck he was doing, we're gonna talk. Uh, he would have been able to keep it on. <laughs> That's why I keep that separate. Here. And now he goes to kick it off. I can make it hard or I can punish him for misplacing uh, his hips while he does it. Now I can strip through, go on the hip, shallow, stretch. Hips underneath me and now I can wrestle. Okay. I'm sorry, Chad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Guys, Chad's great. He knows a lot. Uh, Not my style. Uh, guys, just as a side note, okay, if you're already on the wrist, stay on the wrist. Even if he underhooks me and starts knee slicing me, he, he can't do it with his hand down low, all right? So if I have his wrist and he underhooks me, it doesn't matter because I'll, if he comes forward, I just push his hand under and he's already swept. I just lift. Zero effort and it's something good guys are gonna recognize instantly and no longer try to knee slice you. He'll posture up, try to fix his hip positioning and start hand fighting me instead. But not everyone is very good, and they, you know you have a lot of people that will just try to cut through without paying attention to their hand. So if you were already on his hand, I would stay on his hand. The hand is always better. Okay. The problem is if I wait until he's trying to knee slice me already, start looking for his hand, and I don't get it, I'm in deep shit. Okay. So you can't guarantee you're gonna get it, but I can guarantee you move his head a little bit. Okay. Does that make sense? Always go for the wrists. Okay. Now. His posture is gonna kind of dictate a little bit what I'm looking for. Right now, Chad is standing up very, very tall, and that's fantastic for me, okay? Because the, the taller they are, the more locked out his knee is right here, okay? Um, the easier it's gonna be for me to start hitting dummy suits. You keep up your <clears throat> out, didn't you? Sticky hooks fuck people up, okay? I'm sleeping for a minute. If I had just blasted it this way and not followed him, he would have stepped out and caught himself, and then I would have wrestled up instead, okay? So we're gonna do two moves, and they're gonna chain together, all right? The first is the dummy sweep, okay, from this position. Now, uh, this is the sweep that really throws people off because it looks really simple, right? It looks like I'm just doing this and he falls. Um, it's really hard to teach this to people that are new to jiu-jitsu because they don't have the hip flexor and core control to keep pressure with hooks at a distance yet, okay? I have to be able to, imagine I push him and he starts stepping out, okay? I have to be able to track that with pressure until he hits the ground. Okay. And generally, they'll try to step backwards because I push them backwards. And if I didn't fuck that up, okay. all right, now I'm fucking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can see the more he tries to step out, I can go real slow. I'm trying to demonstrate here. Um, here, you see now his hip angle just changed. Now he's off balance that way really bad. And that happens at the same time as this. And then he places his foot on the ground. We always start to come forward either into a hook wrestle up, depending on his balance, or I could roll to the inside here because his weight is on this foot once it touches the mat, and I can start to strip through, again, to single X, okay? So a lot of times the shin on shin is a transitional guard to more effective guards for sweeps and wrestle ups. Shot. 
Single X and X guard are fantastic for no gi. Okay, they're extremely effective at all levels. So the mechanics going into the dummy sleep first. Okay. First off, I really do want Chad's legs a little wider. Okay. It's easier to hook someone's legs that are that's really close to me here. Really easy to hook them and do something with. The problem is um, he has better balance this way when his legs are close. Okay. Even if I start to knock him off balance, it's going to be a lot easier for him to step out and catch himself. Right. So if I do go for a dummy sweep with narrow legged guys, probably what's going to happen is he steps way back and I track and now I'm coming up. Okay. So we can do something about this though. If I really want a dummy sweep one, or if he's giving it to me by stretching him out a little bit. Okay. Now he's got wide legs. The wider his legs are, look at his plane right now. Off balance this way, off balance the other way. Okay. Now I can go from here to there. Okay. And because he didn't try to set his foot up because he was so off balance, I didn't have to track it though. Really. Okay. But if he had, I would have tried to track it. Now, I actually want to hook behind this. Okay. And when I do this, something you're trying to do is I'm trying to open my legs this way. And at the end of the open, I'm going to pull in. And this is where people really get lost in the mechanics because it's hard to do at first. Okay. I have to do a lot of conditioning stuff to build up my hip flexors to be effective here. Right. Let's put them in a neutral, neutral-ish stance here, something like that, a little bit wider, but not excessive, okay? So when I hook this, I can't go any wider right now, really, so I can't open more. So instead, I would focus on pulling it in towards me, here. At the same time, well, really it's not at the same time, it's 0.1 second after I shift his weight. Right now, if Chad's weight is on his foot, I can pull all day and nothing will happen. As soon as I push him backwards, he starts to shift his weight off that foot. And then once the weight comes off it enough, then I can rip it out. Come on, okay? Something important on all sweeps, guys, from anywhere, is don't sweep him and then look into his really airy and blue eyes, okay? <laughs> Come forward, all right? As soon as he falls down, you are riding your sweeps up every single time, all right? All that sitting here does is give him time to react, okay? So the time to come up isn't after the sweep, it's during the sweep. Come back up, go here again. This is either opening if it's close, pulling in if it's not. Now, uh, you're down on the ground. Obviously, if I was doing a real dummy sweep, I would aim up here with both hands, okay? I don't really wanna just push his hip because I want him to lean backwards. So because I can't reach up like this and push him still, all right. I'm just going to kind of push his center line. Okay. It's not optimal in terms of leverage, but it's, it's working with my goddamn stubby arms. All right. So here, here, at the same time, I also pull in on this leg a little bit. So pull, hook, push. Well, really it's push, hook and pull. All right. Cause again, you're not going to move this if the weight's on. Now I'm up. All right. Do a couple slow. Okay. I want, I want Chad to practice stepping out a little bit and me trying to follow it. So go real slow, I'm not gonna knock you off balance. Tracking that, tracking that, okay? While he's falling, and that's my sweep, all right? And then you can start to pick this up, okay? I don't want them to step out a lot yet. Guys, if you, if you step out of them every time, they're not gonna be able to learn how to do it, okay? And then in the match, then you crush their dreams, okay? But <laughs> let them learn first, here. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys how to wrestle up from this position when you fuck up on the jump squat, okay? Because really this is a beautiful back and forth. And it's, a, it's just such a great example of him making a ton of mistakes way before we get to this point that basically if we both play correctly, I'm gonna win, okay? Because the mistakes he's already making is like letting me have my hip on this side, having good cross pressure on this sticky hook, not already uh, trying to control my posture and my head and all that, you know what I mean? I'm set up to go. All right, so he doesn't really have a choice on what's going to happen over here, okay, until he corrects all those mistakes. So like when I go like this, he steps out, and I know as soon as his foot lifts off my foot that I am not going to be able to dummy sweep him anymore. But do you see how far he has to go back to catch himself right now? Now I'm going to go to dummy sweep you kind of hard, but I'm not actually going to knock you over. So don't fall, you know. <laughs> catch yourself, okay? I don't know if this is the test. <laughs> okay, go on. Okay. Look how much further his foot is out now. You see how much further it is away? And his weight's on. Alright? So the closer, okay, this is the thing about chains in general. Alright? 
Everyone loves the second and third step of the chain because those are the ones that you nail and they feel easy because the setup has been done. Okay, you're just taking the optimal route. Now, if you notice when I barely dummy swept him, his foot was significantly closer and it's a lot easier for him to rapidly shift his weight from here to here. All right, this is the problem. You can't be only focused on the second, third, or fourth parts of a chain. Your first move has to have threat. Okay, it's like people that want to throw feints. All right, I use a boxing analogy for this. You know, if I'm out of the pocket and you can't reach me, I don't have to react to a fake jab. There's no threat, okay? If I fake my dummy sweep because I really want to wrestle up, he's not going to step far enough out for me to wrestle up. I won't get it, or it's going to be sloppier. So you really have to commit to everything you have to the first steps of the chain while keeping the flow chart in the back of your head of where you're going to go if he does this, this, and this. Okay? It's just keeping the big picture in mind, and that's what's going to let you switch fluidly between things, but that does take timing and practice and drill. Okay? So, now I'm going to talk you through wrestling up from here. Once I make him step out, you can see I'm already switching my feet. The shin hook is actually not going to help me get up. It's actually going to be in my way. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this foot with this one, shift my hips behind me. Okay, now you see I'm, I'm attached, uh, ideally, when I hook his leg, I can straighten him, especially with my chest pressure coming forward over right here, and if my timing is good, his weight is still on that back leg, okay? Now, because um, this is important, you don't want to go forward here unless he really fucked up over there, okay? Because right now, with his, his knee line being about where my chest is, right, his hips are above my whole body. If I go to come forward, he gets his weight situated again, he can hip into me and knock him back over really well. Right? And it's not a battle you want to get into with someone bigger. You just want to avoid it. So in a lot of these wrestlers from here, actually a lot of my wrestling in general, I don't go into people, or if I do, it's just to shift their weight to that other foot for a second, and then I scoop his leg backwards using my arm. You see my right hand on the mat now, my left foot. When it transitions off to the side, it's going to take the weight down. This right leg's just here to scoop. Okay? Hips are, or my hips are behind me, ideally. I'm just going to scoop this up. Back up. Okay? Like I said, if I try to go forward, it's a fight I can lose. If I back up, the only thing I have to worry about is not clamping so much tight enough. And not pinching tight enough. And then he just runs away like a... <laughs> some people are dying this over the years. Okay? The old uh, man wrote a it. Yes. <laughs> but, all right. So, again, I go for my dummy sweep. Already coming forward. You see, I, when I hooked it, it already kind of dragged it out. And that's even better because the wider it is, the better. Here. Here. And usually I like it right up so I can pinch here. And now that it's pinched off pretty tight, I can adjust my hand position to a better takedown finish. Okay. Um, if you guys know how to finish single legs from here, fantastic. Do the variations you feel comfortable with. Uh, in order to not get weak, you got to put them down fast if you're going to be in here. Or, and this is what I recommend you learn how to do, okay, I don't have time to show all of it tonight, but I hike it up across into a football carry. Alright? Not to the inside, unless I'm really confident I'm about to throw. Okay? Once you hike this across up into a football carry, usually this is a turn in. And balancing. If he wasn't, I would just get on his hips. Right here. Now I can make separation. He can't be easy in here. Alright? Uh, he tries to hang on my head at all. All I do is really neat. I've been doing this for a few years now, okay? I just grab his calf and I block his elbow. I level change. Okay? I am lifting, but really it's a block. And at the same time, I actually drag his calf. And the combination. Puts me right behind him into a body lock every single time. He's making a mistake by posting on the Okay? He is a little different because you can grab your collar. But no he. Once I'm here, keep space separation, got that pretty tight. He shouldn't be doing this. This is easy. Now I have my body lock and I'll finish him. Okay? If you're having trouble hiking this up to a football carry, remember I said I'll only go forward really to uh, make them shift their weight. Uh, the reason he's having trouble hiking this up is he's putting his weight on his leg. See, it's like making it hard for the lift. 
So you go forward. As soon as I go forward, the weight shifts. There's no way to stop me. Right away, I want space. I don't want to be here. Uh, it feels nice being close and attached to the guys, but he can put his side down. And actually, the pressure can move me around and knock me off balance. Plus, I'm closer to his arms. Okay? He teams the front headlocks are extremely effective. You actually want space here. And then if I want to get closer, I can drag him with the inside throws. You can do foot sweep in here. You can do this as your finish instead of your shoulders. There's a lot of ways to finish from that, okay? But whatever variation you guys work that works for you, that's fine. <clears throat> Dummy sweep. Look. Don't, for the love of God, do not hook and pause. Okay, if you hook and pause, we can knock you over everything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a full one, okay? <laughs> Not really, but. Are you still ready? No. <laughs> Never ready. <laughs> it's easy when they're tiny. <laughs> but you can tiny. see how I, I have to go. It's for your weight class, you're But I can't pause there. As soon as I'm switching my feet, it's from hook to here. Scooping. Okay, here this is holding the leg, back up, under me this way, and I'm hopping backwards if I can scoop this up and pinch it. Forward, football carry, or however you like to finish thing legs. Questions? And the better you do your dummy sweep, the better the wrestle up is gonna work. Okay? Go ahead and grab your partners. Bye, have a great time. Guys, if you want to learn more about the techniques that we actually use, we have a lot of instructionals on BJJFanatics.com. If you guys just have too much money and want to throw some away to some sketchy causes, feel free to check out our Patreon. And if you guys want to just see some random shit that I'm not posting on YouTube, small videos, pictures, whatever, you can check out our Instagram.